Hey guys, it's Natasha. Welcome back to my channel and I hope you guys are having a great and wonderful day And if you're new, hello and welcome and hopefully you guys like my videos Stay hit the subscribe button and the post notification icon so it notifies you every time I upload a new video So for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I study specifically for my biology classes I briefly mentioned this in a past video and you guys are like bring us this video We want to see it. So here I am sit down. I have a lot to share. So let's get started Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know I am majoring in biomedical sciences this this is my third and final year. I took a lot of credits per semester, which helped me cut down in my graduation day. So I have a lot of biology courses under my belt. So I took genetics, human anatomy, general biology, evolution, ecology, and organismal biology. And I'm currently taking physiology and molecular biology. And then next semester I'm taking cellular biology. And then the next semester after that I'm taking biochemistry. Let me tell you, it has definitely been a challenge. Some classes are more challenging than others. Human anatomy, a moment of silence. A moment of silence for human anatomy. That class takes work. My human anatomy was a cadaver class, so we actually got to see a real life cadaver and learn from the book and then go to class and apply our knowledge and actually see it, which I thought it was super, super cool, but uh, definitely hard work. I was supposed to take advanced human anatomy this semester and dissect a cadaver, but we're online. I'm kind of mad. I really wanted to dissect it. Okay, so now for study methods. First and foremost, you need to know what type of learner you are. Are you kinesthetic? Are you visual? Are you auditory? Are you hands-on? What type of learner? You need to have that down in the bag. Faster you figure out what type of learner you are, the more time you're gonna save in studying because you know you're gonna use studying techniques that work for you. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is gather all your information. You need to have all your content in front of you so you can make sure that you're studying everything that you need to study. So first things first, I take out my reading notes. So my reading notes are notes that I made throughout the weeks of me learning the subjects by reading the textbooks. So when I'm making my reading notes for my classes I have my textbook open I have my notebook open I'm reading everything that I need to and I'm writing it down as I'm reading it so I'm writing down everything in my own words and drawing little diagrams and stuff like that or writing things to remember or how to understand them better so that is how I have my reading notes then I have my lecture notes so when I show up to lecture and I'm listening to what the teacher's saying I write down things that he's saying out loud that's not on the lecture slides because sometimes he explains something better out loud that he doesn't write down because all the slides or point form so I have those notes so then I open up all the tabs with the slides that I need to study so for example if I have a four chapters that I need to study for I have my four PowerPoint or lecture slides from the teacher open so now I have my reading notes I have my lecture notes and I have all the slides open and if I want to I can open up the textbook but usually with those three things I'm all good okay so study time I have my laptop out and I'm gonna open all my slides <laughs> Okay, I have my slides open and now I have my notebook that includes my lecture notes and my reading notes. So these are my reading notes. I know they are because they have the green heading and then the notes with the purple heading are the lecture notes. So I have them opened up right here for the chapter that I wanna study. I have my slides open for the chapter I wanna study and now we can get started. So the more exposure you get to the content, the better you're gonna remember it and understand it. In biology and in higher biology classes that you get, the higher you get, you can't simply rely on memorizing the concepts. Because if you just memorize the concept, then you can't connect the concepts. You need to understand what you're learning because concept A is probably gonna be applied in concept C. And if you just memorize A, you're not gonna see the connection between A and C. So you really need to take time to really understand all the system, all the processes. So take time to study. Okay, so now for step two is summarize all the content. I have all the tabs open I have all my notes available so what I like to use is my lecture slide as a guide I open up my lecture slide and slides are usually in a point form there's not much explanation on it but the slides usually contain everything that we need to know or like all the major topics that we need to know for the test so if I know what the main heading is and I understand that concept then I can write a more condensed version in my summarized notes so these are my summarized notes each one is worth one chapter double-sided I keep it very condensed um, I'll write down the main point on the lecture slide and put like one or two, three words that remind me of that definition. But if I'm looking at a subject heading and I don't know what it is, I go read the subject heading, look for that definition in my reading notes, see what I wrote down for myself because my reading notes are in my own words for me to understand. So as I read my own notes, oh, I understand that this topic means X, Y, and Z. You know what I mean? And then I can go ahead and write it in my condensed notes with a little bit more detail. So I go ahead and do that 
I go in between my lecture slide, my own reading notes, and my lecture notes, and I form a condensed version of the entire chapter. This process takes the longest. I need to sit down, no distractions. I'm condensing all my notes, making sure I know every single definition or kind of understand, not necessarily know right away, but understand every single definition that I'm going to write here. So I'm going through my notes. I'm writing it down. If there's still things that I don't understand it from my own notes or from the lecture slides, I take it to YouTube. YouTube is my best friend. Okay. So if I don't understand something that I'm reading here that I explained myself and I need to write it over here and even the slides don't make sense, I go to YouTube. I open up YouTube. I type whatever I'm looking for and then I watch whatever video. I'll select a video, usually the short videos that are condensed to really understand like the main idea of the system or something that I'm listening to and I open up my video to go ahead and watch it. Not only am I writing things down, I'm reading them, but I'm also repeating them to myself so then I can get it in my brain. The more I repeat things to myself, the more I have it in here and the more I can like literally spit it out to you. My goal is to be able to spit out any definition because if you can ask me any definition, forward, backwards, upside down, underground, and I can say it to you, then I really know that I understand the concept in and out. Okay, so that was step two, definitely the longest one, the one that takes me the most time, but I want to take time learning this so I can make sure that I'm really understanding what I'm studying. Okay, now we move on to step three, which is actually making sure that all these concepts are in the brain and not like if you tell me a definition, I'm like, I'm really not sure what you're talking about. I need to make sure that I know this stuff. So I like to keep this beside my bed and it's practice time. I need to make sure that I know the information that is on these pieces of papers. So I'll keep it beside my bed. I'll pick two chapters per night and then I'll first read the page that I wrote down. Make sure that I understand everything that's on it. And then round two, I'm going to teach myself. The best way to really know if you understand something is being able to answer questions or like teaching someone. I don't know if you've been in like the library before when someone asks you a question, they don't really know a concept and by you teaching them, it kind of reassures you that you know the concept well. So what I like to do is that I'm pretending that I'm teaching to my fake audience in my room. Now it's practice time. I'm going to read this and I'm going to show you a little role play of how I do this when I study. So for example, okay class, welcome. Today we're doing chapter two. I literally pretend that I'm in class. I don't care if it looks ridiculous. I either do it on my bed or in front of the mirror over there. I'm like, okay, we're going to learn about um, sympathetic nervous system and how that happens. So what do we have? We have a preganglion, we have a postganglion. See, I'm referring to the thing because I still don't know it yet. Okay, after I go through one round of explaining like that, I'm like, okay class, now we're gonna look at the sympathetic nervous system. We have a preganglion and a postganglionic. At the preganglionic, we have acetylcholine. At the postganglionic, we have norepinephrine. See, first step, reading it while teaching. Second round, teaching it while saying everything out loud and then after i say everything i thought let me see let me read did i miss something yes we missed the nicotinic we miss the adrenal receptors you know i see what i missed and then i go ahead so we're going to look at the sympathetic nervous system we have the preganglion on the post you know we repeat it again and we're just saying it out loud over and over again to make sure that it's in here that it's engraved in the brain okay but now we're going to do the last part of step three we already went through the notes verbally we taught our class but now we're going to continue Continue teaching our class as I write things down. As I write things down, again, things are being ingrained into my brain. The more I write it down, the better it is. So I have my markers over here. I have my piece of paper of gold here. So we're gonna do the same thing, but try to do it from memory. So we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna look at the preganglionic, postganglionic. What is that gonna look like? And I go ahead and draw it out. So pretend that this is the preganglion. I don't even know if you guys can see it the preganglion and then it goes and branches out and what do you find over here we find acetylcholine i'm pretending i have a class i go ahead write it down then go ahead check my little handy dandy sheet did i draw it down po properly did i make sure that i got all the processes down i match it it looks great we move on i teach myself out loud because then i'm repeating the concept i'm reading the concept and I'm making sure that I understand everything. So that's step three, practice, 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 teaching myself, reading my notes, um, saying it out loud, pretending that I'm talking to someone, writing it down on a board. Again, visual learn, I need to write things down, get it in my brain. I'm just doing this repeatedly over and over again to get as much exposure to the content so it's sticking in my brain. I wanna be 
able to tell you the information from whatever angle you ask. So now for step four, I have my pages of gold already written out and now I'm using Quizlet. I freaking love this app. This is not sponsored by Quizlet. I wish it was. I freaking love you guys. I freaking love this app. So Quizlet has different types of study material slash ways to study. So I'm going to show you a little quick one too on how I have my Quizlet kind of set up. So I was learning about hemodynamics. So I made my set by taking my sheet, looking at the definitions here and writing each definition down. As you can see, we have different types and if you can flip it over, you see each one has a little definition and term. What I love about Quizlet, so not only can you use flashcards, so I'll go ahead and use a flashcard feature. This is my favorite feature. So for example, I go into options. I like to have the term only so then I can give them the definition. So it's asking me, what is laminar flow? And I'm like, ah. I don't know what it is. I flip it over, I go ahead and read it out loud. So laminar floor is X, Y, and Z. And because I don't know it, I swipe it to the side of study again. And then ask me, next question. If I do know this one, I'm like, oh yeah, I got it right. I swipe it to this one. And then, then I just keep going through it. And at the end, when you go through it, you can click continue studying and it'll only show you the ones you got wrong. So then you can try again. If you don't really know it, you wanna go ahead and review it again. You keep swiping. If you know this one now, you go ahead. And then I go through that and then and I go through the deck again. What I also love about this is the little test feature. So you can click the start test. It'll tell you a definition. You have to write down what the term is. It'll give you the term, write down the definition. Like I said before, and test. And then there's also a matching. So you can play the game and start matching the definitions with the little term. I wish this was sponsored by Quizlet because I really do love them. I really love Quizlet. Like they have my back. And then I'll go back to the entire deck and make sure that I can go through the entire deck and be able to say everything correctly. I know all the terms, know all the steps. Whew. I am exhausted. That was a lot of steps. This is the most extensive version of my study when I have time. When I don't have time, I take pieces and steps from this and still incorporate it in my study. I can tell you that this works. It really does. The more you're exposed to the information, the better you're gonna know it. And this has been able to get me straight A's in my biology classes. All my biology classes, I'm able to pass with an A because I'm able to expose myself with this information so often and I really know what I'm doing. So that concludes how I study for my biology classes. There are definitely other steps that you could do or other steps that are more important in some biology classes versus others. So for example, if I was studying for human anatomy, I wouldn't take time to write things down in notes and look at all my lecture slides, no, no, no. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, specifically for lab human anatomy, I'm going to take time on Quizlet. That's what I'm gonna take most of my time on. I'm gonna keep going on Quizlet, making sure I know all the parts of the body, the functions, the movement, the muscles acting up on each other. That's what I'm gonna take time. So I really like to have this kind of like structure of me studying and depending what the class requires, I take pieces of it or I do it as a whole to get the highest grade in that class. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give a thumbs up, leave a comment down below on any video you guys want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at natasha.matherin and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.